than what it needs to be to get through what you're cutting. The amateur cuts a piece of half inch ply, plywood and puts the wood blade down to three inches. I'm asking why they do that. It'll hold it straight, they tell me. The idea being that there's more blade down in there. But what it does is if you go a little quick and it binds up, grabs it, and you or it go across the room. It gets rather dramatic. And you hear them burn it. You can hear it. I mean, after a while, you've been a foreman for a while, you can be across the other side of the room. I can hear shit going on in that uh, that shop over there. You know, guys, I'll do it. You know, with the chop saw, you know, whatever the, you know, you know, instead of cutting it right, you hear going through the stall band table, and you can smell it burning over here. You go, you're not sending, you know, the, the fence isn't on straight. You're wedging it and things like that. So it's like hearing somebody on you know, the screw gun not being on number one speed, but being on number two, and they're trying to drive big screws. And you hear it going. You say, put it on number one. You go, oh, God, how does he know? Because it's offensive to the ear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like listening to somebody play your records, and you pull out your vinyl record, and it's some trumpet player from the 1950s that your dad gave you. Somebody says, can we listen to this? Yeah, okay. So you turn on the turntable, and you're one of five people on the island that own one. You put the record down, and they go to play, and say, God, I love that part. And they reach over, and they scratch it. And they go, come on, guy, it's just a record. Them, you know? You know? <laughs> well, that's the way I'm to my tools. It's like hearing my dad's record get scratched. You know? It's just it's offensive. You know? Anyway, you take this, you stand here a couple of heights, you do it. When you set it shallow, it is not going to go down in there, and that's going to stay connected. That works for you. Turn it around the other side, do this. Always put stuff out like that in case Robert's around. <laughs> it's your early morning detection device. Yeah. I thought my degree is difficult. Right. Then you come over here, you cut that. Then you can take it out. And you can either one, you, you take this one here like this, and you can take the saw and cut it, hold it in here this way. And you can put this brace at either end you want to. I have found, I pull them out. I like just to be at this nice, comfortable height do the cut here. Some guys are cutting the two ends, then putting it in there, cutting the two sides. Here's the beautiful. When you cut it, it stays connected at the corners because you set the blade shallow. If you put it real deep, it's going to clear cut it. Take the sawzall, that's the one with the flat blade, come over here where it's still in the wedgie and just trim it off. You're only going to cut a half an inch. So if I've got this up here in the corner, up here like this, and I've cut through all but the corners, right? Kind of neat. It's like having somebody hold you and say, hold that while I cut the other end, right? So what we learned to do is come down here, cut this in, cut this in, Leave this one holding it, right? What's well, kind of neat? Then you come back with a sawzall. That's the straight blade one. You're familiar.